Loveland School District. Good morning. Um, special guest again this morning, Brad Nevin, the superintendent of Loveland Schools. And uh, we talked about three weeks ago, has it been? Uh, so. And said we'd get together again because Brad's been out uh, interviewing the community, I guess. Exactly. Finding out about Loveland, finding out what's going on finding out about what's going on in the district and what people want. I think I phrased that pretty well, didn't I? Oh yeah, yeah, that's it exactly. Okay, so we said we'd get back together again and you could uh, tell folks what you found out about us and what, what's on people's mind and, and so forth. So what's going on? Well, I've, to date I've had, um, I think I just completed my 50th coffee or I will have completed my 50th coffee today. And again, to remind folks, a coffee is a conversation like this. It's meeting with a group of people. It's actually sitting and having coffee or lunch with somebody. And essentially the purpose of this campaign is just to listen. Um, what I've found is that there are a lot of folks out there who feel like their voices haven't been heard, um, or they've tried to express their voice in a way that's not gotten back to the district uh, through social media or whatever. Um, oftentimes in the community, people think that if they engage on social media that we, and I don't just mean here, I mean across the board, that we as an organization have that information. We may not be following it, you know, because it's hard to manage all those different areas. Yeah. Um, and to me, the best communication is when you can in person, face to face, probably the next best is like this. Um, but it's groups where it's manageable, where you can actually exchange ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I've spoken with folks who have been been uh, leaders on the campaign for the for the levy campaigns. I've talked to board members, um, over 400 of our staff members. I've met with them, and those are a little bit larger groups, but still gave them the opportunity to ask whatever questions they had. Um, even had them prepare the questions ahead of time, so we didn't have those moments of silence where nobody was asking, so they could uh -huh. ask their questions anonymously. Um, you know, which has been challenging at times, uh, but but. You know these are challenging times so i i'm not going to shy away from that um and and i found some really solid patterns the patterns that i found is is this community um is ready to talk i think no matter what side of the issue they're on again people want to be heard they're ready to move forward to make good decisions for the kids and the schools and ultimately the community um but i would say the number one takeaway is that they want to be heard and they want to be part of the equation which is really really critical you don't see that in all communities um, there are times where when you get to, to difficult issues, some folks just want to sit back and watch it from the sidelines. Um, what I've found with the folks I've talked with is they want to be part of the solution, which is exciting to me. Yeah. Um, as I've said to you over and over again, you know, I, I did my research before I came here and I really believe in this town and this community and obviously the school district. And I've been so pleased with the folks that I've met. Um, again, the, the community has gone through some challenging times, but uh, I feel strongly that we can all move forward together. Are, are there any uh, particular subject areas that came up that uh, predominant, you know, one, two, three, four? Well, I, I would tell you, you know, obviously the, the, the levy is kind of the, the levies. It's kind of the 900 pound gorilla in the room, right? I mean, that's what, uh -huh. what where the division occurred. Um, and what I've heard from folks is, and this is from both sides, what I've heard from folks, they either were, um, they were surprised by the amount of the initial levy um, they were surprised with the scope of the project that was coming out of that. Um, there were folks who said, we knew that was on the table, but didn't realize that we were going to go for that huge project. You know, we thought, yes, that's kind of the dream. Um, but it was like, there's a disconnect between having between the dream and what it was going to cost. And the disconnect was that there wasn't a lot of conversation. Is this really doable? Um, and it ended up on the ballot and, and obviously got shot down almost 80-20. Uh, as I said to the board, and I, I've said to the community, the 80-20 vote, um, while it's not good news for the district necessarily, it's very, very clear. It's very, it's good data. Mm -hmm. um, and the community was very clear in that that wasn't acceptable. So um, that's a talking point to me. You know, then we go from there and say, okay, let's try to determine down the road what is acceptable. And as I mentioned to you before, I don't, I've had no conversations with the board about when they would go yeah. on the ballot for operating money, much less a major cash capital project. My impression of the board, and I know some may watch us, 
is that they're reflecting on things and being very strategic in how they're looking at their next steps. Um, they're working very hard to hire a new superintendent and they're taking the right steps to do that by getting a, a reputable firm um, and, and just taking their time, again, to be very strategic in that process. And that's, that's key to this whole, this whole thing. I mean, hiring the next leader of the district and then considering that we have board seats up in the fall. Um, so that new board, once it's established in January, has to be a part of this conversation and they get the opportunity to take the community's input to make those decisions. Someone told me the other day that it may be four out of the five seats that will be up for election. I think that's possible. That? That's possible. Yeah. Um, so what's, what was number two that you heard? It's, well, the first thing I said is that they want to be engaged. Um, yeah. The other, the other thing that I heard is, you know, that the operating levy, some people said they felt that the operating levy that failed uh, may have been reasonable, but they, there were folks who said, we wanted to really understand where the school finances are before we voted for that. Some folks said they felt that the COVID pandemic hurt that process. Um, the votes, there weren't a lot of voters. The, the, the percentage of voters who showed up was way lower um, for that campaign. So um, obviously at some point in time, the district is going to have to raise additional revenues, mm -hmm. even if it's, you know, it's just because of the cost of doing business going up. But we're looking very hard at how we spend our money as well, as you know. Um, you, so again, you, it's not good news that that, that second levy failed. Um, but it's really interesting looking in the voter turnout and how that may have had impacts and all. But I, I, as I said, I think the board's being very strategic in their thinking and how they're moving forward. Uh, they have a couple of big positions to fill and, um, and they're committed to that. Uh, so there has been a firm hired. I, uh, I don't think that the contract has been approved, okay. but in the last board meeting, it was, it was narrowed down. Um, okay. And the board, uh, a couple of board members are in the process of finishing up that contract and, and okay. getting it to the point where it could be approved. But the great part about this with, with these firms, um, for reputable firms, and I talked to the board about this, when they go in and make a proposal to a district on doing a search, they have a good understanding of that school district. Again, if they're a reputable firm, they have a good understanding of that school district, and they start thinking about who are potential candidates that would be a good match. Um, mm -hmm. And they don't, they don't force that person or those people on the board, but they start to think of what could be a good match. In a district like ours, as an example, if you have someone who has very limited experience and that experience is all in a very small district, um, it would be a heavy lift for them to move into a place like this. Okay, so um, again, these firms kind of understand who may be out there and then they'll start to engage the community, get the community's input um, to really narrow down who could be a good fit. Uh, do you know, know what the plans are yet for the, how the board's going to engage your community in the selection? Um, there are focus groups and that kind of thing. I don't know what the mechanics will be based on the different firms. I mean, some are still, they're using some online type engagement, uh, depending on what tools they use. Um, others still do the face-to-face -face type forms, copies, that type thing. So I can't speak to that firmly because, at this point. Because um, engagement is important because that's what you started talking about is engagement. Mm -hmm. And so that people are heard. Absolutely. And, uh, they have and I will places. say this, the board, the board, um, that's the number one priority for, or a number one priority for the board is the engagement. It's again, it's just the mechanics of, of how each particular firm handles that. Yeah. And engagement's still difficult because of COVID. Sure. Getting people in one place where they can talk and, and feel comfortable. We, we've mm -hmm. all learned just like we're doing today, different exactly. ways of communicating. Did you, did you hear any uh, pros, cons, uh, good, bad uh, about the education that the children are getting. And I guess in light of COVID too, about in-person uh, or the remote academy and so forth. Yeah, I, I've heard um, some comments out there about, about um, COVID and about the impacts that it's had and the negative impacts on education. I think, I think most people, um, I mean, my view is that the best, the best education is face-to-face -face in the same room. Um, and for some people though, they make that choice that they're keeping their children at home. I fully respect that. So I think there is that on the table. We have to think about how we move forward. 
Um, we're having conversations here in the office about what we can do to try to assist families throughout the summer to keep the kids wow. caught up or to get them caught up. Um, and we have to be responsive, obviously, to what is coming out of Columbus. Will there be funds available for that type thing? Uh, but clearly, we recognize as educators that the summer slide that we always experience could be, it's a very long summer, for lack of a better term. Yeah. So that needs to be addressed. And, I, and I, can't, I can't articulate that right now because, again, we're having to respond to what we see coming out of Columbus. So there's that concern. The other thing I've heard in the community is that um, they want our, our students, all of our students, to be taken to their optimum potential as students. Um, so that means that if you have a high performing student, we want to make them even higher performing. I mean, I've heard that out there and I've brought that back to our team. Uh, I believe our team recognizes that. Um, but I think that's part of the engagement process that needs to be ongoing as well. You know, I, I, I welcome and encourage parents to continue to challenge us as educators so we can do our craft better to better serve our kids. I'm, cer I'm certain they will here at Loveland. Oh, sure. They always sure. have. Yeah. Um, and uh, if someone would ask me, and you have, no one's asked me, but there are an awful lot of students who don't particularly care for some, the whole summer break. I mean, they, they really like school and they like learning. They're challenged by it here. And of course, closer to when school does open up again, you hear children, they're ready. They're ready to get mm -hmm. back and learn. So yeah, you know, it's interesting. would be really, really a good thing. And now that the remote academy especially has, the district has learned how to do that. And a lot of parents yeah. have learned how to do that. And it'd be a good opportunity this summer you know, on the, on, David, on the broader spectrum, I, I was I was thinking about this with the corporate world. What does this mean now? The fact that, you know, we're comfortable having these conversations. Um, but what does all this digital technology, how does this play out, how we communicate in the business world, in the corporate world? But also, what does it mean for education? Um, again, I still feel like the three-dimensional model where the, it's in the classroom is the most effective. Um, but as we move forward, does this op open up more opportunities? Like you were talking about the academy. I mean, maybe that's our resource for those summer, either enrichment or catch up or just moving forward. Um, I do think we've gotten pretty good at this and we can use this as a tool, an additional tool, not a substitution for the traditional model. So mm -hmm. it'll be fascinating to see as things move forward. Yeah. Well, I, I've heard a lot, of, a, a lot about the success of it all from students and parents and teachers. So I think I think people were, have learned a lot and shoot this happened to us so we might as well take advantage of it and learn from it. Well it was interesting for me because um, you know I retired in 2017 and we were having these conversations about a blended model of learning where we have students online and in the classroom and all and it was one of those kind of academic discussions um, and then I retired and what a year and a half ago or so we went uh oh it's in our face we have yeah, to jump into this model or lose our kids, you know, lose their educational process. So um, I, I think it's, it's generally worked out pretty well. We are starting to see some things where there are students that, that get frustrated because they, they need that classroom interaction. Um, other students do fine. Most students, it's kind of a mix of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure there's not too many that don't miss the interaction. It's, it, it is important to them. And... Well, and a great example, if you're, in a, if you're in a discussion model like this, this is one thing. Um, it's very difficult to do a chemistry class like this. Yeah. It's oh, difficult yeah. to do a biology lab. You know, I mean, those, that's an entirely different situation. So it's just a matter of figuring out as we move forward, what's the best model to, for the students learning. Yeah, you're not sending home frogs to every uh, biology student. Well, I hope you? not. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, something that come up between uh, the last time we talked and now was the uh, board decision to uh, send the letter about mm -hmm. school tests. So can you just real briefly explain what that is? And it seems like I've heard this week that uh, House Bill 40 uh, is going to depend on federal government, the, the Federal Department of Education. Is that, and is that so? And Yes. And it seems yes. like there's been a decision made at the federal level that the testing is going to happen. Can... There's, there's some um, 
there has been some movement and I received an update. I was part of a superintendent's update today and unfortunately I had to leave the meeting, but I get a summary of that. So um, things are happening pretty quickly. So th the state testing model is responsive to federal requirements. So the state can't just say we're going to cancel our entire testing program without getting some relief from the federal government. Um, you, we've talked about my position. My position is that it's a week and a half of time that we could be instructing our students. And I think the data, I know the data is going to be flawed anyway. It's going to be skewed. Um, just because of the fact that, that a classroom is not a classroom as it was two years ago. Mm -hmm. So while we could say, well, so all the students, our scores will, will, we understand they may drop, but I think within the cohort group, we're going to see a, a wider spread um, just because of, again, the delivery model. So my feeling is suspend the testing for this year, which is why I recommended that to the board that they pass the resolution. Um, however, I, and I said this with the board, we will give the board a report as to how our students are doing based on our assessments that we use. There's a map assessment, some other things we use. And I call those the short cycle assessment. You know, it's where the teacher assesses the student and has immediate data on how to inform his or her instruction moving forward. That's so, really been uh, ramped up in the last few years too. So it has, you know, and, and one of the problems I've always had with the state model is we want to get the data back for months. For there was a period of time where we want to get the data back for months and then we didn't know what questions the student missed. It was just a number. So it really did nothing for us to be able to adjust our instruction, instructional model. Well, eventually we started getting the actual questions back and we knew where the students or the strands where students were having problems. But even with that, if it takes weeks and weeks and weeks to get that data back, you think of the growth of an eight-year-old child and their development. I mean, we need that data immediately so that we can make good decisions about how we continue to teach them. So that's really where I stand on it. Um, we'll see how it all plays out. Um, we know it's incredibly political. Uh, and hopefully we can gain some instructional time back with our, for our teachers and our students. Can you, can you tell me what test you're talking about and what grade levels? It's not every student, is it? It's, it's all grade, I mean, pretty much all grade levels. Okay. Um, you know, you have the standardized, the, uh, the reading and the math tests, which you see in more of the grade levels. At the high school level, we do have the end of course exams. And that's a concern because we need to know if the students of, of have mastered that material because it counts towards the graduation credit. So um, my feeling, and I don't know where this will end up, is we can still do the end of course exams. You know, I mean, the teachers can administer those exams and we can go ahead and get that data and figure out where we stand on things. Um, if that's really, if they really are relevant to the graduation requirements. I understand that. Um, but some of these tests, you know, that with, with especially in the younger grades, um, I just don't know that they provide us with the data we need to move forward. Hey, uh, I know you're, uh, you've got a pretty busy schedule. Uh, one more question. Sure. What have you found out you really like, personally like about Loveland? Any favorites, any place to be eat or? I, I've used this joke a lot. Yeah, I've used this joke a lot. At one point, you know, I was, I was expressing my frustration that a community has to go through this, not, not, angry with anybody just it just saddens me to see a town like this have to go through this kind of experience and some of it as we've talked about before is the state testing model being found or, i'm sorry the state funding model being unconstitutional and i just don't believe communities should go through this but i did say I, I hate to see a community fight and my joke was i said would you know why disney is called disney because loveland was already taken you know um uh -huh. it is a absolutely charming community that has and i mean this it has it has the charm of a traditional midwestern community with the progressiveness of a solid educational system and a lot of professional folks great restaurants and shops i mean it's just a it's a special place um the other day when they got a little bit warm i actually got to sit out and have coffee with someone at one of the coffee shops downtown and just uh, it, it's like a vacation spot i mean it's just such a nice town so um, I'm starting to enjoy that. I mean, I'm getting a little antsy to be able to get outside and enjoy those things more like we all are. So I'm really looking forward to the spring coming and seeing kind of getting a flair for what the downtown's like. I, I, uh, I don't know if coins the, the right word, but I, I started calling it love on a resort a decade ago. 
I agree. And it's you know, state, something that I, I plays, yeah, something I've always learned you is seen um, anything yet until summer hits. Oh yeah, I've how heard that. Is, how fun it is here. Something I've heard, you know, I learned a long time ago that if you really want to get to know a community, um, connect with a police officer. Uh -huh. So I had one of our school resource officers, Mike, throw me around last Friday, and and showed me showed me every spot in the community. I mean, we went through the, the entire school district. Oh, good. Even, you know, some of the challenging places as well. And he could give me anecdotal information about troubles in particular neighborhoods and all. Um, but I was, I was incredibly impressed with the diversity of the community. Um, I was incredibly impressed with, with um, just the geography. I mean, just the beauty of the, you know, the rolling hills and all that kind of thing. I had been through and driven around to the extent that I could. But again, if you have a police officer, they know, they know the community. So it was really telling. And again, you know, it makes it even more exciting to me to see the spring come and get to get out there outside a little bit more. I'm, I'm really glad to hear, hear that, that you did get to take that physical tour and have someone tell you about the different neighborhoods and the diversity, because um, I was going to offer it, except I'm still kind of quarantined. <laughs> Yeah, I understand. I'm, I got my, my uh, vaccine yesterday, so I'm a, a little bit away from getting out much, but I'm really glad you did that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was it was fun. And it's um, and like you said, like a vacation spot. I, I said that to my wife. I said, you know, this is the kind of town now that we know about it. That we would say wherever it is, you know, we'd say, hey, let's go spend a weekend VRBO and get a, spend a weekend at a place like that. Um, you know, I'm not doing a vacation pitch for Loveland, but I certainly could. I've talked to my friends about it quite a bit. Sure. I call it the staycation place of uh, Southwest Ohio. I agree. Because if you live here, you don't have to leave. You can take your vacations here and there's just sure. so much to sure. do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, again, welcome to Loveland. Thank you. And, and thanks for spending the time this morning. I appreciate it. And let's follow up with some more, okay? Absolutely. And just, you know, in closing, I'd say as I continue to do this engagement, I've talked to the board and now what we have to do is find a way to gather all these folks together and start to kind of, you know, hear the findings, hear the bullets, most of it's anecdotal, um, but then put that into a strategy to move forward. You know, I want people to know that this isn't just about having conversations. It's about using the data received from those conversations to make good recommendations on how to move forward with as many people engaged as possible. Well, keep, keep Level Magazine in mind because that's, Part of the reasons we uh, we started the whole thing is so people could communicate better. So perhaps we've gotten fairly good at it. I don't know. Well, you're part Keep of our communications team, like I said, and and I've had several people who said they saw our last interview, which is a good thing. Good. Okay. Yeah, I'll, re I'll put that in this in this one too, so people can be sure to see that again. That interview. And please again list my contact information. Tell them to give me a call. Yeah. Uh, or an email and I'll get back as, I, as soon as I possibly can so we can keep the conversation going forward. Okay. All right. Have a good, have a good Friday and a good weekend. Yes, sir. Take care. Okay. Bye.